During the First World War, VAD nurses were part of the Voluntary Aid Detachment, run by the British Red Cross Society. Each nurse had just 10 days first aid training and a three-month probationary period on the ward. The VADs supported the fully qualified nurses and doctors by doing the ward cleaning and patient caring. With women from all classes of society now working, clothes, and especially underwear were altering rapidly. Cotton combinations were one of a range of practical undergarments. The colored ribbons could be removed so the cotton could be boil washed, and the linen buttons were flat so that the garment would survive being put through the mangle. The combinations buttoned down the front and were open-legged for convenience. Black stockings were specified by the VAD uniform regulations. VAD nurses were expected to be smart and disciplined in their appearance, and wearing a corset was part of that well-turned-out look. Corsets were traditionally made with steel bones and busks to give them structure, but steel was now requisitioned for the war effort. Munition workers were even banned from wearing corsets with any metal for fear that the steel might generate sparks, igniting explosives. So during the 1910s, Lighter styles of corsetry developed, and the corset evolved into something more like a girdle. The corset now fitted beneath the bust and came down over the hips. All sorts of ingenious techniques were employed to give it structure, with limited recourse to steel. Corsets were even promoted as back support for war workers. Just like the earlier corsets, they were front fastening and the back lacing could be adjusted easily to ensure a comfortable fit. Perfume dusting powder was a small luxury that the nurses enjoyed. Makeup and perfume were otherwise not allowed. The corset often had elastic garters or suspenders to hold up the stockings, a very practical solution for hard-working women. The stockings were held in place by fastening a metal suspender clip onto the rubber disc with the stocking top in between. This held the stockings firmly in place. A waist petticoat completed the undergarments. The voluntary nature of VAD nursing meant that only women with a private income could afford to sign up. And for many of the nurses recruited, their uniform was the first time out of fashionable clothes into purely functional clothing. The VAD nurse's uniform differed in style to that of the trained nurse. Strict dress regulations were set out by the Joint War Committee for both indoor and outdoor wear, and from 1915, the VAD uniform received protection under the Defense of the Realm Act. VAD dresses did very little, but they were always made from a hard-wearing blue cotton chambray. They were long-sleeved, fitted at the waist, and fastened at the side left of the front. Many of the gowns had a concealed modesty piece at the center front, which ensured that the dress remained securely fastened. But there were no buttons or rough edges that could chafe an injured patient. The left side fastened closed with concealed hooks and eyes. There were plenty of pockets. Once the nurse had completed her three-month probation period, she was expected to purchase or have made a complete indoor uniform which included three of these dresses. There was some compensation for the cost of the uniform, but it was less than half the actual sum needed. Initially, VAD nurses wore small, plain white Sister Dora caps, but gradually the volunteers began to adopt a smarter army-style veil, much to the annoyance of the professional nurses. In the autumn of 1915, to maintain the distinction between the volunteer and the professionally trained nurses, a new style of veil was introduced for the VAD nurse by order of the Joint War Committee. This rectangular veil was pinned into place over the folds at the back of the neck with a safety pin. The nurses were expected to own eight of them. The small top pocket was designed to hold items such as a thermometer and a pencil. 
The full-length apron had a waistband and a high round necked bib marked with a red cross. The shoulder straps crossed over at the back and fastened with buttons at the waist. There were two large practical pockets. The apron was the item that the nurses were required to have the most of, 16 of them in all, which was an indicator both of the messy nature of their work and the levels of hygiene required. Oversleeves protected her dress from soiling and the patients from infection. She required six pairs. A single wipeable Macintosh apron was also stipulated. A series of sleeve stripes were introduced in the autumn of 1917 in recognition of the years of experience attained by VAD nurses. White stripes denoted length of service and red stripes denoted that they had had at least two years service in military hospitals and had been certified as efficient by their matron and commanding officer. The uniform included three white starched belts which fastened to the left side with studs. Most fastenings were kept to the sides or back of the uniform to protect vulnerable patients from further discomfort when close contact was required. The nurse's uniform was also intended to emphasize purity and to provide a beacon of hope to patients and their families. The high starched collar served to maintain this smart appearance rather than having any practical purpose. A concession was made when serving overseas, however, and the nurses were able to adopt a softer falling collar due to the heat and conditions of work. The wearing of indoor uniform for traveling was only permitted if the distance to work was short. Shoes had to be black, flat, and rubber soled for work on the wards. Mass warfare meant mass casualties. The injured were transferred from the front line to field hospitals and by ship to the UK. Patients were then dispersed by train to the network of military, auxiliary, and convalescent hospitals. VAD nurses worked in both field hospitals, close to the battlefield, and in longer-term places of recuperation back in Britain. By 1918, there were about 80,000 VAD members. Although there were many professional nursing groups working brilliantly and tirelessly during the war, it was the VAD nurses that remained in the popular imagination. It was the VAD nurse who washed and fed the patients, changed their dressings, and cared for their well-being. It was the VAD nurse who entertained the patients and jollied them along. It was the VAD nurse who held their hands through long nights of distress and encouraged them through difficult convalescence. It was not for nothing that they were known as the Tommy's favorite.